What's up guys? In this video, I'll be sharing some tips and practices that will allow you to learn to code much faster. Start your DevOps journey by checking out CodeCloud.com and gain access to DevOps courses that will equip you with the necessary skills that are in demand today. Whether you are a beginner or already a professional, CodeCloud.com has all the resources you need that are designed to boost your DevOps career. Work on real-world tasks and problems with Code Cloud Engineer Pro and gain the experience and confidence you need to prepare for your first DevOps engineer job. For everything DevOps, Code Cloud has got you covered. Tip number one, picking the right programming language. There are a lot of programming languages out there right now, and it may be confusing for someone just starting out which one to pick. First, I recommend learning a programming language that is considered to be a high-level programming language. High level means that the syntax and keywords being used are much closer to the human language as opposed to the machine language. This in turn makes it fairly easier to learn and understand. As the codes that we write are very similar to how we declare things when we are communicating with other people. Second, well, it depends, mainly on what you'd like to do. If you'd like to build native games or apps for mobile devices, Android and iOS phones are the big players in this space. So, you can either pick Java for Android phones or Swift for iOS phones. You can also go with a language that can allow you to build for both, which is Flutter, an open source framework built by Google, and it uses the Dart programming language. Now, if you just want to learn to code and want a language that can be used for general purposes and can be used for many things, there's nothing wrong with going with the most popular programming language, and that is Python. Python is considered to be a high-level programming language, and the best part is, you can do a lot with Python, and I really mean a lot. Like AI and machine learning, web development, data science and analytics, data visualization, game development, and much, much more. You can even integrate Python into your everyday tasks in your personal life or at work and automate those repetitive tasks. This is the reason why Python is so popular and widely used, since you can do so much with it. The syntax is very easy to learn since it's a high-level language, and there are no unnecessary symbols that other programming languages have that obstruct your view, making it easier to read and understand. Tip number two, set your goal and prepare yourself to see it through. Picking the programming language is the easy part. My next tip would be to prepare yourself mentally and emotionally as you begin your journey. As you learn to code, you will come across roadblocks or reach certain topics that may be too hard to get a grasp on. A lot of people at this stage tend to give up and stop learning, but my advice is to push through. You can seek help on message boards or try to look up that specific problem that you're having a hard time with, and soon enough, you'll overcome that challenge. Keep learning and keep growing. Consistency is key. It's better to allot at least 30 minutes a day than to not make any progress at all for that day. Tip number three, assess yourself how you learn best. Individuals learn differently from one another. Some learn better by reading written content like programming books and blog content on the web, and some learn through a combination of audio and visual presentations like video tutorials. Figure out which medium better fits your learning style and stick to it. Everyone is unique, and identifying this factor is key to success in learning to code much faster. Tip number four, stick to one programming language at a time. Many new coders fall into this trap, and this often results in being overwhelmed and stopping their progress entirely. You may have heard the term full stack software engineers, who are basically software engineers that are knowledgeable in multiple programming languages. It is quite possible to learn multiple programming languages since they often share the same concepts. So once you have proficiency in one programming language, you'll find it much easier to learn another. There is always something new or better out there. And the mistake is trying to learn all of these things at once. Try to focus on one programming language at a time and see it until completion, until you're ready to move on to the next. Tip number five, focus on the foundation and basics first, then move on to the more advanced topics. This is one of the most common mistakes that people new to coding make. They skip through a lot of the basic concepts and jump ahead to advanced topics in an attempt to learn coding faster. This should be avoided as much as possible. Gaining a better understanding of underlying basics will solidify your foundational skills and prepare you for more complex topics. 
This also reduces the chance of hitting a roadblock and halting your progress because you missed some of the key important information from the beginning. Once you have the basics covered, proceed to learn about the object-oriented programming approach, as well as data structures and algorithms. This will bring your problem-solving coding skills to the next level and allow you to handle more complex tasks. These advanced topics also make up the majority of technical interviews. Tip number six, learn by doing and create your own projects. Coding is both a mental and physical task. Follow along with every quiz and exercise as much as possible, as this will give you hands-on experience. Learning by doing will also allow you to absorb the information faster and retain it for a much longer time. Implement what you have learned and create projects that are actually useful to you personally. If you use an expense tracker app often, then why not create one yourself? This will allow you to debug and solve real world problems as you build your application. Add new features to it as you progress and learn new coding concepts. Tip number seven, get certified if you can. Once you're comfortable with building new projects from scratch and debugging from your chosen programming language, that will be the time to get your skills validated based on standards and best practices on a global scale. Popular programming languages such as Python have these certifications available that you can take. These certifications, along with your self-created projects, provide a great boost to your credibility and are more hireable, especially if you're just starting out as a junior programmer. Tip number eight, communication is also a key part. If you're planning to have a career in software development, keep in mind that it's not all about the technical skills. Communication skills should also be given equal attention to programming skills. Let me explain. You may have created the best software known to the whole world, but without the proper ability to convey or communicate this in an easy to understand format or presentation, then it may become hard to convince people to see your software as how you perceive it. This also applies to interviews because having the ability to explain complex solutions or ideas is how they measure how well informed and knowledgeable you are in the subject. Tip number nine, getting a job as a new software engineer. Don't be afraid to start small. What this means is that it is perfectly fine to start in a junior programming role or even an internship. Remember that experience is rather valued and is very important for software engineers. Each year you add to your experience goes a long way toward career progression as a software engineer. Two to three years is considered mid-level and five years or more are considered senior level. Overall, it adds to the kind of salary and benefits you can get as you gain more experience. And last but very not least, our tip number 10, start your journey with the right resources. CodeCloud has courses readily available that can take your Python programming skills to the next step. Take the Certified Python Entry-Level Programmer PCEP Preparation course and gain your PCEP certification and move up to the next level through the Certified Associate in Python Programming, PCAP. Each course covers everything you need to know about Python, from basic to advanced concepts. Follow along and gain hands-on experience with labs built right into the course. Need help with a certain topic? Join CodeCloud's active Slack community and collaborate with instructors and fellow students who are on the same journey. All right, so there you have it. These would definitely be the things that I'll be doing if I were to start over and learn to code all over again. I hope this video helped you all out. For more tip videos like this, be sure to like